guys, welcome back to another video. Today we're gonna to be talking about my filming equipment slash tech gear, basically everything that I use to make the channel possible. So if this is your first time on the channel, my name is Paula. I film product and travel reviews as well as share experiences about my daily life. So if you wanted to follow us along, go ahead and hit subscribe to the channel and let's jump right into the video. First and foremost, I will start with the filming equipment that I use. Right now, I'm using the EOS R6 from Canon. And obviously, this is what I'm using right now. I bought this in closer to end of 2020, which is, I believe, the year that it was released. In my journey of learning how to film and edit on my own, I have focused on gradually learning different skills. And so right now, I'm learning a little bit more into getting better at color grading. As you can see, I've introduced a little bit more color into our setting today. With the Canon EOS R6, I have really enjoyed it because it really gives you a lot more manipulation on the colors if you're someone who wants to change the colors it has been a really good tool to have versus other cameras I've used in the past so I've been really happy with this one Along with that, I have three lenses. So when I purchase the R6, I have the kit lens, which is, I believe, the focal length of 25 millimeter to 105. I'll put the specific specs somewhere on the screen here, but that is what came with the bundle on my R6. And then I also wanted to have a fixed lens, which is what I'm using right now. And that is the 35 millimeter. I believe this one was also a Canon brand. I like this one because it's just fixed and it gives me a good blurring effect in the background. If it's something that's just like a sit down like this, I feel like it gives a good effect. And then last but not least is the 16 millimeter. So the 16 millimeter is the smallest out of all three lenses because obviously it has a shorter focal length. This one gives you a wider angle for something that's a little bit more casual like a vlog or something that's just more like lifestyle oriented. I've been relying on this one a lot more. Next filming equipment that I use is actually just my iPhone. So I have the 12 Pro Max. It's the first phone camera that I have that has the wide angle lens, which I'm really happy with when it comes to, again, more run and gun shots, whether it's for a vlog or maybe some B-roll that I wanted to capture that I didn't have my camera with me for. It has really decent audio and really, really good picture quality, as you guys may know if you've ever played with it. And this is one of those times where if you're just starting out on your channel, don't underestimate the equipment that you already have, especially now with the rise in popularity of vertical videos, whether you're on Reels, TikTok, or Shorts, whatever one of those platforms that you prefer to be on, everyone's using their cell phone nowadays because they make really great cameras. So I still use this as part of my rotation with my filming. And then last but not least, um, this is my DJI Osmo, which is basically a stabilizer that you can um, hook up your phone with. I use this for when I'm walking around and I wanted to get something where I am maybe talking to the camera and I wanted to pan somewhere um, left and right. This has been something that's good to stabilize those shots. I find that there is still a learning curve with it because I feel like sometimes the gimbal likes to drift to a certain direction that I don't actually want it to go into so sometimes I lose my shot but it does keep your shots really smooth. Next, I wanted to go over audio. Now, audio is something that I feel like I am still learning how to get better at. Again, if you're just starting out and you just wanted to keep things simple, all that we really need to know when you are filming your first couple videos is that your voice can actually be heard and it's clear. So you might not necessarily need to invest in audio just yet. So today I have all the mics that I have available. Let's start with the fuzzy one right here. This one is the Rode Video Micro, and this is a fair fairly inexpensive mic, so if you wanted to get an external mic, this one is a good one to get started with. Um, what I like about this is that it doesn't need to be charged, it can just be hooked up directly onto the camera. It comes with this fuzzy part here, which is called the dead cat. Um, this diffuses all the wind noise. Without it though, you just have the standard mic right here. I don't think I've ever used it without the fuzzy part. This is basically what it comes with. It has the little horseshoe bracket that you just kind of slide on to the top of your camera mount. But yeah, this one's a really good one to start with and I've used this for many years. And then recently, I actually got gifted this last year. So this is the Rode Video Mic Pro Plus. So it is a shotgun mic. Again, you slide it on the top of your camera, plug it into the camera with the little cord that comes with it. The difference is with this one, it does have its own power button, so it does need to be charged. But what's great about that is 
it is smart enough to know that if the camera is turned on and the mic is turned on it'll obviously stay on also but when the camera is off this also turns off automatically i haven't really needed to charge this as often because of that so that's been really good i feel like it has a decent battery life and it does have a more improved audio versus this one a little bit pricier than the first mic that we were talking about but again something that you can upgrade to in the future last but not least is the mic that we're using today i keep forgetting what it's called but i think this is the road go this is also by the same brand as the first two mics that we've talked about it's a lapel mic that is wireless completely and then it has a transmitter that attaches to the camera i used this in my venetian hotel review and it has helped really diffuse a lot of the background noise because obviously at a casino there's lots of noise with the machines and people just walking around you um, but this one did a really good job of just picking up my vocals i love that it's really small and compact and it's really easy to um, just bring around with me it's not so chunky like this one i would say the only con that i can think of with this one is it does also have to be charged so you have to make sure that both the transmitter and the mic has battery because this one is so much closer to your face it does get a lot louder it took me a couple of tries to actually get this video going because the first round that we had everything was so loud and then the second round that we had everything was so soft so once you kind of get over those little kinks these are really good tools to have as well Now let's talk about the other equipment that I use for the other half of filming, which is editing. I used to be editing exclusively on Final Cut Pro. And then as of Friday, I decided to try out DaVinci Resolve. I started shooting in C-Log. And if you're not familiar with that, that's okay. I'll go into it a little bit more detail in another video. What C-Log does is it allows you to apply LUTs, which is where you can manipulate more of the colors of the video. With that, it takes up bigger memory because we're also shooting it in 4K and different frame rates and Final Cut Pro just really didn't have the tools that it would need to really bring out those colors. Long story short, my previous laptop couldn't handle the files that we were using with DaVinci or even just playing it back in Final Cut Pro. I used to have the 2019, I believe, MacBook Pro and it would heat up really, really fast. That's not even with me applying so many things to the video yet. That's just me playing it back and it would start lagging. So I made the switch to the 2021 MacBook Pro just last Friday and I've been happy with it so far. There was a 16 inch versus a 14 inch and at first I was hesitant to get the 16 inch because it was significantly thicker than my previous laptop and a little bit heavier too so i wanted to get something that was a little bit more portable but i found that i might benefit more with a bigger real estate on my screen and i'm glad that i did because it is a lot harder to edit on davinci on a smaller screen just because there's a lot more things going on so um, i'm really happy with this i got this in the space gray color so far so good i've just been really happy with that purchase next i have the iPad here. This is the iPad Air. I've talked about this a couple times already. I use this to tether my camera to. I usually use this iPad Air to mirror everything that the camera sees on the iPad and I will set it to the side here. It helps me see what the shot looks like and be able to record without having to get up behind the camera. I'll go into more detail about how DaVinci is going um, in another video this month, so keep an eye out for that. And last but not least is the miscellaneous items that we have. Currently, my main light source is this spring light, which is the newer 18 inch, I believe. I got this maybe like five years ago when I was just getting started with my channel. The only thing I don't like about it is that it is made pretty flimsy. However, it turns on and off really easily and it has a little bit of a dimmer switch. So that's been nice when I want to control the brightness. And then I also have this tripod right behind it, which is where my camera is usually propped up. This has been a really useful one, really easy to use, and it's really lightweight, which is something that I also prioritize when it comes to my equipment um, in case I am traveling with them. So yeah, these are my miscellaneous items. And that is it for today's video. Hopefully you guys learned a thing or two about the filming setup that we talked about today. Um, whether you're someone who's just starting out or was just curious to see what other you know, gear I use. Hopefully this video has been helpful. If you guys like this video, don't forget to hit the thumbs up down below. Thank you guys again for tuning in and I will see you guys in the next video.